WestJet is Canada's second largest airline behind the behemoth that is Air Canada. Naturally, Air Canada dominates the long-haul market in and out of Canada. That was until 2016 when WestJet started competing with them on trunk roads across the Atlantic. But today, six years later, their modest long-haul network is still overshadowed by the one of Air Canada, having grown to only eight destinations across the pond. So I've always been curious about how WestJet's Boeing 787 compares to Air Canada's Boeing 787 on a transatlantic flight and economy, because I've flown on Air Canada before and their flight was rather mediocre. I've actually made a Brutally Honest episode about that flight, so make sure to check it out as well. But today I'm very excited to finally be able to find out what WestJet's Dreamliner is going to be like, because I'm in Phoenix, Arizona right now, and one of the cheapest ways to fly back to Europe was actually to fly to London Gatwick with a brief layover in Calgary on WestJet. So I'm very excited to take you along on this trip. Thank you for being here and welcome to this new episode of Brutally Honest. Our journey starts at Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. Thanks to WestJet's partnership with Delta, certain perks that come with a Delta status are available on WestJet, giving me the possibility to use the priority check-in counters as well as priority boarding. Thank you. Our first flight from Phoenix up to Calgary is operated by CGWBU, a 2014 built Boeing 737-800, which features a 2-2 configured business class up front and the regular 3-3 configured economy class behind that. Thanks to my Delta status, I was also able to reserve an economy class seat further in the front of the plane for free, where legroom is more generous than in the back. The seats also come with a universal power outlet and a USB port, as well as an adjustable headrest. Okay, behind your head with the elastic strap. Pull on the two loose ends to tighten. Make sure to put your own mask on first before assisting anyone else. In preparation for being off, please ensure that your seat back is upright and your table tray is stowed. If your electronic device becomes wedged within the seat, do not adjust the seat or try to retrieve it. The service on this flight is the same as on my recent domestic flight with them, consisting of a pack of pretzels as well as a non-alcoholic beverage of choice. I went with some ginger ale. The aircraft is also equipped with Wi-Fi, which was available for a fee. Additional snacks and alcoholic beverages were offered for purchase as well. Stream to your device entertainment is offered for free, however, but considering the breathtaking views on this flight, I certainly did not need any additional entertainment today. The flight to Calgary took around 3 hours. And transiting in Calgary is fairly simple, as the airport isn't as big as Air Canada's hubs are. It is important to note, however, that to do an international to international transit in Canada, you'll have to enter the country and therefore need to fulfill all the requirements that come with it. For me, that meant the electronic travel registration for Canada, as well as vaccination documentations, any negative PCR test conducted no later than 72 hours before departure. Although I did not physically have to enter Canada as I was guided from the border control station straight back airside to the departure area, meaning I did not have to go through security again, so the whole procedure was done within 10 minutes. 
And at this point I have to underline, Calgary is one of the most beautiful airports in all of North America. Thank you for waiting. WestJet Flight 001 to London Gatwick is now ready for priority boarding. Thank you. You have a nice evening. Our ride across the pond tonight is CGKKN, a 2020 built Boeing 787-9, which features a small business class up front, a premium economy class behind that, and a standard 333 configured economy class in the back, offering 320 seats in total. My seat tonight will be 28K, where a bottle of water, a pillow, and a blanket were already waiting for me. Especially the bottle of water is a very thoughtful gesture on long haul flights. The legroom is fine for me, being 180 centimeters tall. Each seat is equipped with a tray table, which can be used half opened or fully opened as well as a personal entertainment screen with the audio and USB ports beneath it. An additional USB port as well as a universal power outlet is provided beneath the seats. The headrests are adjustable as well. The in-flight entertainment system offers various movies and TV shows to watch on demand, even though I'd say the selection isn't as good as on most other North American airlines. We would appreciate your attention during the safety video as it outlines the safety features for this aircraft. Veuillez porter attention à cette vidéo qui présente les mesures de sécurité concernant cet avion. For everyone's safety, all carry on. After takeoff, complimentary pairs of headphones were handed out by the crew. Usually this is also the point where the crew would provide an initial beverage service with some pretzels. But for reasons I'll get into later, this was not the case on my flight. So it was straight to dinner service, which came with a hot main course in a box. In my case, roasted chicken with potato gratin and vegetables. A seemingly small portion, but I think that's just because I'm not used to it being served in a box. I was full after the meal, so I guess it was fine. It also came with a portion of potato salad, a piece of chocolate cake, a cup of water, and a cold bread roll with butter. On long haul flights, WestJet also offers alcoholic beverages for free, so I went with a Canadian beer. All in all, I'd say this service is fairly similar to what Air Canada offers, both in terms of quality and quantity. Compared to most other airlines, it isn't the best, but certainly not on a level that warrants complaining. After that, it was time to get a couple of hours of sleep. All right, and here's the reason why pretzels weren't served before dinner. They were served for breakfast. And not because that's normal, but because the catering company forgot to load the breakfast boxes onto the aircraft and the crew didn't notice before departure. 
According to them, usually they do provide a little breakfast box, which was also shown on the menu. But for us today, it was only a pack of pretzels and regular beverages. I would have loved to be able to show you the usual experience. After that, we were already beginning our descent into London. WestJet is obviously trying to be a good airline. Their crews are super friendly and highly motivated. Their planes are modern and kept in good shape. Everything you need is there, from pillows and blankets, to headphones, a state-of-the-art entertainment system, USB and power ports. It is because of this that it's especially disappointing their catering partners screwed up. It shows that the routine of operating long-haul flights isn't fully there yet, and I hope this is not a recurring experience when flying transatlantic with them. For my part, I would instantly give them another chance should they be an option, and I hope they'll expand further into Europe, offering more flights to more destinations. Especially in the Air Canada-dominated, German-speaking part of Europe, I would appreciate a WestJet connection. But until then, thank you very much for being with us, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Brutally Honest, and you'll join me again next Friday on Air France's Airbus A350, also a flight from Canada, departing Toronto, heading to Paris, on one of the most underrated economy class products in all of Europe. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week, and until then, have a great time everyone. Left side number. Wallet.